Okay, hello, it's me, and this is the, um, I guess, second part, the answer to the questions uh, that I was giving. Now, as you recall, we had two parodies that came from this case cube. One was an apparent parody that happened with the uh, edges. Just to show that, let's say we're on our last layer here, and we want to flip them. We see this is flipped wrong, this is flipped wrong, and uh, this is flipped right, and this is flipped wrong. So we have three wrong and one right. So if we tried to flip all those that we needed to flip, uh, we're going to run into trouble. So let's say we do our, um, let's find what our F is here. So it's going to be lined up like this. And let's say we wanted to find as maybe this is the, is the L shape here. So we do our F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. And well, here's a line over here. Well, actually not, not really, because this is flipped right, this is flipped right, this is flipped right, and this is flipped wrong. So how did that happen? Well, let's actually get them into configuration so that we can line them up and, and see, what, see what occurred here. Um, so this is here. I want to put the proper orange one here. So R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. Not quite there yet. R, U, R, I, U, R, to you, all right, so this is good, this is good, and I would just have to get this in place, so we move this over here until this comes next to here. This is just Rubik's Cube strategy here. R, U, R, I, U, R, to you, R, I, and this, this moves twice, okay. So this is the correct configuration, orange, orange, we do have the red and we have this red over here. So why did this happen? Well, did you figure it out? The basic reason why this happened is because we created parity by doing that fallacy of false equivocation. Now recall that you get parity when you take one piece and equivocate it to a different piece. In other words, you say that one piece is equivalent to another piece, even though it's not. Because in order to solve a puzzle, there's only one confirmation that's acceptable. Um, even though you may confuse one piece for another, the puzzle won't let you do that at the very end. Um, we encountered something like this with, um, with the, uh, uh, this guy here, with the master uh, uh, paramorphings. You recall that we would end up in a situation like this, where all the corners seem to be in, we just had to rotate this uh, in the proper way. So we would go like, turn, in order to do that, if I can remember, we go uh, turn, 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 just review, turn, and turn, 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 turn turn, turn, and we're thinking, uh-oh, we thought we had these all in, but they're really not. And the reason why that was is we would have to turn this over here. This actually was not turned in the proper way. Because we thought that all these sides are symmetric, we thought we could turn it anyway and that would be fine, but it actually isn't. This is not rotated correctly, even though you would have no way of knowing that um, because the shape and the color is exactly the same. It's not like a typical edge. But you couldn't know that, which is why you'd make that fallacy of false equivocation. So just by turning this around, we were able to come about the solution. Well, we did something similar over here. Now understand that when we have an edge parity, the only time that we got that <clears throat> with the 4x4 is because we didn't pair the edges correctly in an even-numbered puzzle. We didn't pair the edges correctly because there's just two or six or, you know, any even number, and we assume that they were exactly the same. Even though if we put it in upside down, you wouldn't know that until the end. You know, they have to be paired like this. If you paired it like that, you could do that, but you'd have no way of knowing that that's not the correct configuration for the end of the puzzle. So because of that, we have to consider the fact that we paired an edge wrong. If we didn't pair an edge wrong, because it's a 3x3, three three, we must have oriented an edge wrong. So if you take a look at these edges here, this is an edge, um, this is an edge, and this whole thing is an edge over here. Because of that, how do I know that this is, or this, is rotated correctly? In other words, what if this is supposed to be 180 degrees? I would know that that's the case if this were a Rubik's Cube. Um, 
because the edges of a Rubik's Cube have two different colors. This is an edge that joins two centers of the same color, so I'd have no way of knowing that. I falsely equivocated one rotation with another rotation, and because I did that, I put parity with the edges over here. So all I did, if you looked at carefully at how I got that out, is I just put, I put this edge up here and put it back in, but upside down. So what I'm going to do to get out of this situation, to get this parity correct, is I'm just going to rotate this edge. So what I'm going to do is uh, find one of the edges here. I'm just going to put this edge down to here, only for the purposes of bringing it back up here. So I'll go turn, 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 turn. This is just edge swapping middle layer algorithm here. So now I put this red edge, red and white edge down here, but my whole point of that was to move this edge over here. Now this red edge over here. So now I'm going to swing this around and now I'm going to put this edge back into here, but this time because I swung it around, it's going to put it in in the opposite direction that it was before. If I move it in from here, I'm just going to swing it right back where, it's, where it was from uh, the first place that caused the parity. This is not supposed to come in in this direction. If I had a, a little color here and the same color here, I would know that, but I don't because this is a single colored edge. So I'm not going to put it in here. I know that that's wrong. That's what I put it out of. So I'm going to swing it around here. Well, I guess it would be easier to show it like this. Put it here and swing it in this direction. So turn turn, turn, turn. And that's the whole thing. When you encounter parity, understand, you falsely equivocated something. You falsely thought that something was could be in any position when in reality it has one specific position. And because it was an edge parity, you knew that it was an edge that actually caused that s situation. So now look what we've got. Now I've got two that are down, two that are up, giving me my L formation and allowing me to do my F R U R I U I if I can F I there's my line F R U R I U I F I there's my edges my little X-Men well actually it's not quite like that yet so put the rest in my orange I'm gonna move an orange over here by holding it here, R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I, not yet, R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I, we're good, we're good. So I'm just going to move this over until the red one comes here, R, U, R, U. If I'm moving too fast, understand I'm assuming knowledge of how to solve a Rubik's Cube, but I can slow it down. So good, 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 good. So again, these, although it looks like it can be any direction, it actually isn't. That's a fallacy of false equivocation, which in essence is the cause of parity. When you, when you falsely equivocate one piece for another, or one rotation for another, or one side for another. Now we didn't encounter this with... Um, uh, on the edges with the pyromorphics because even though you have one color of an edge, these are edges and these are one color here and it's going from you know the same color, the shape is different. So I knew what direction it was supposed to be at. So for the pyromorphics, the master pyromorphics rather, I didn't run into that kind of an edge parity because I knew the specific orientation and I, I knew that towards the last layer. You can see the tutorial when I went through the last layer with that, but I knew that. Whoops. Here I had no idea because the shape was symmetric. It was more. Uh, it was symmetric over here. It had rotational symmetry. This one does not. So I was able to pick which one that is. So what about the next parity? What about that corner parity? So let's see if we can't recreate that. So turn, 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 turn. I'm just quickly getting it back into the configuration that revealed that that's what I had. Nothing yet. Forward, forward, back, back, boom, pow, bang, splat. Okay, so this is in, and this is in. So these two are in, these two are out. So, did you figure out why that happened? Well, with the edge parity that happened because of edge false equivocation.
um, the edges were wrong. With corner parity, the corner parity happened because there's an issue with how I place the corners. Now if you noticed very carefully, if you looked at the configuration, I put the blue one here and I put the green one here. But actually, if, if you looked at the beginning, you'd see that if I hold it here with the orange one on, with a yellow layer on top, and the red over here, it was actually the blue that was supposed to be here, not the green. The blue was to the right of the red, and the green was to the, um, to the left. Now, I usually don't memorize that, uh, but I would have no way of knowing that. So what I, did, what I would do to get out of that is basically I have to flip these two. Now, you can do one of two things. You can either memorize it at the beginning, which would be fine, or you could just find out that you have that parity um, as you're putting in uh, the last layer. So when that happens, I'm just going to take this out and put it into here. Because in this particular puzzle, I have no way of really knowing what's supposed to be here except the configuration um, memorized in the solved state, you know, at, at the very beginning. Because these edges, again, have a solid color, and even though, I'm sorry, these corners, even though they join three sides, it doesn't disclose the color of any other side except for this, solf, uh, this uh, false side. So I'll just bring this down, and I'm basically kind of in many ways going back to the drawing board, which is okay. And now I'm just going to move it into here, turn, turn. So I just move the green one over. Let's go ahead and move the blue one over here. easy to get a little confused regarding the shape of this and a little turned around too. Actually, we'll move this over here. Turn. There we go. Turn and up. So this is the proper configuration. This is what my first layer should have been. So now it's just a matter of moving it in. So we've got our middle layer here. We just reconstitute this. Good, good, good. Now notice I've got that, that, uh, that parity situation here, which means when I turn this in, I probably turned it in upside down. So this needs to be rotated. So I'm just going to turn this out. So to get out of that parity, I don't need any new algorithms. I just need to know the mechanism of how that parity occurred. And if I know the mechanism of how that parity occurred, I can just do a very quick, familiar algorithm to uh, get out of it. So here it is over here. So now I'm going to not move it back in from here. I'm going to move it in from here. Turn, turn. Like I say, you could just memorize a parity to get out of it, or you can just understand what the heck happened. Turn, turn, turn. And lo and behold, after having done that, these two are, um, this is my line. These two are in, these two are out. So. So we've reconstituted our, corner, our edges here. Now look at our corners. This is in, out, out, and out. So we've solved it. We basically, by putting these in the right position, in this case, we didn't falsely equivocate um, just a piece. We falsely equivocated an entire false side. So now with this in, we just do our, our corner um, rotating algorithm. U, R. UI LI U R I U I L in out 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 try it again turn back back bang zoom pow and splat in 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 all we have to do is now rotate these around so turn just like uh, the last stage of a Rubik's Cube. Turn. Turn, 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 turn. Move this over here. And finally, last but not least, turn, 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 turn. After a long and arduous journey, you have finally solved your case cube. And there it is. So, 
If you like mods, this is a very good addition to any modification collection because it's not just a standard 3x3 modification. Because they've equivocated certain sides, you've got equivocal edges over here, giving you the possibility of edge parity and also the possibility of corner parity by potentially equivocating these false sides with each other. But that's how you get through it. That's how you do it. So. Uh, a lot of these mods, the good news with those is they tend to be fairly inexpensive and fairly easy to find. This one I actually found on eBay. I think you can get it from Mefferts as well. So just Google it. You can probably find it somewhere. Um, so have fun. We'll move on to more next. Actually, there. That looks better.